I can't make head to tail of this game. I really can't. And I'm trying. I want you all to know that I'm trying. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Preach. And our journey through FF13, first time playing it, never known anything about it until now, continues on. And we talked a lot about the combat yesterday. If you missed that, go and check that episode. Because overall, I'm really enjoying the combat. It, it plays into my raid leader thought process. It's great. So understand we did plenty of boss fights today. Lots of cool stuff happened uh, combat-wise, and I enjoyed the hell out of it. So a TLDR there is the combat is doing really well. My only grievance uh, at this point is the talent trees are so, so infinitely worse than what they had in Final Fantasy X with the, 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 the sphere grid. And I'm just kind of... I wonder if people th thought the sphere grid was overwhelming in a sort of Path of Exile style, and they needed to simplify it because they put so much work into the presentation... The swooshy camera, the crystal flowers opening up to show where to go. But ultimately, you kind of hold down one button and occasionally pick up, go left or right. But even that, you're going to do anyway. Because it's like, well, do you want your character to have more magic power? Yeah. Do you want them to have a sooner? Yeah. And I'm sure there is some giga min max version. But for your first time playthrough, you're like, okay, I can go left or right. But I'm going to do both. <laughs> and they give you way more points than you need so you end up just like fully specking out every tree anyway because i found out that if you spec into a different talent tree that maybe you don't really use like lightning as a medic i don't really want to use lightning as a medic but she has strength and magic gains in there which are universal so you just want all the trees anyway <laughs> it seems to be trying to obfuscate the fact that it's just a very basic leveling system but Either way, it's a minor grievance, don't really care. Put it to the side. Let's talk about what the hell is happening in this game. Because they're taking some liberties, bro. They're taking some liberties, some absolute liberties. Oh, I do want to point out. Uh, usually, uh, Bex does a wonderful job of editing all these in for exactly what I'm talking about. But it turns out, and you can Google this, uh, we only found out after we started the TDP, is that FF13 has copyright claimed all its cutscenes, or most of its cutscenes. Not the audio, the visuals. So, we might not be able to use some of them, or uh, my decision was use them because it makes the video for you guys more relevant, and we just don't earn any revenue for making these videos for you guys. So, consider subscribing on our website or Twitch. Thank you. Uh, that's my sellout for the day. <clears throat> All right. Here's what's going on. Let's talk about Vanilla. Vanilla was my number one character. Her eternal optimism in the face of overwhelming odds... Her logical approach to things, like, hey, there's a war going on over there. Well, let's just go the other way. Uh, made total sense to me as a relatable character. Like, I know people who have this sort of toxic positivity, I think is the, the accurate label for it. It's like, everything's falling apart, but if we put a smile on it and we keep trucking through, and you can see them almost like boiling up with rage, but they're like, happy vibes in my vibe circle or whatever. I was like, I get this person. I've dealt with these people. I totally get them. Everybody else, I can't relate to Snow. The superhero mega tank can fall a thousand feet through a steel chair and he's fine. Uh, and he's so cool. And I'm going to save everybody, bro. Uh, same with Lightning. Is like, and then I changed my name to Lightning. It's like, really? That's where you landed? <laughs> you landed on Lightning, huh? Okay. Um, those are obviously not relatable characters. These are like people you knew in high school who were absolutely shunned to death because like that person lived in comic book world and you're like, okay, can you come to reality? I love comic books too, but can we be in reality for a little while? No, because I'm snow. And it's like, okay, sure. But Vanilla, I could. But... Vanilla's doing that thing that I really hate, which is harboring things that should be communicated so they can start be, to be worked on, right? And you know at some point it's going to blow up. Yes, it's a video game trope, but it's such a real-life trope. And the, the only real people I've ever lost as friends over the years have because they've squashed down some minor, minor problem for like a year or more and then let it like blow up at some point because they've thought about it. They've dwelled on it. Things have got on top of it. And instead of just saying, hey, dude, that sucks. I don't like that. Or the, the way you said that to me didn't come across well. As somebody who is often very uh, sarcastic and uh, says things in my, you know, in my mind is like, this person would never take offense to this. And if anybody's ever watched my stream, it's a back and forth I have with my community all the time. They'll call me a clown, the worst ever, constantly. And I will fire back, obviously. I'm not here as a punching bag. And that's the kind of banter level that I enjoy. Not everybody does. And sometimes people take offense. And I've regularly, a, a, a decent person, uh, not a decent person, that's the wrong word. 
Uh, a reasonable person, let's say that, will say like, oh, I don't like that. Cool. Then that's not how we vibe. And I like you as a person completely and will vibe a different way. But Vanilla is, um, was my favorite character, but she's harboring all these secrets. More secrets than you can possibly imagine, in fact. Oh. <laughs> so, the secret, let's talk about this storyline because it's the one that's annoyed me the most. The storyline is between Saz and Vanille. Saz reveals that his son has been chosen to be a Lassie, and as far as he knows, uh, he is a Sanctum Lassie, so he's on the quote-unquote good side of Cocoon. And she is, as we know, a Pulse Lassie, which is the baddies, the monsters, all that kind of stuff. Um, and Saz reveals that his young child, who looks to be, I don't know, six or seven, uh, has been chosen, and that means he's either going to become a ghoul or he's going to become a crystal. And he's devastated because his son is essentially dead, is the situation. His son's essentially dead. Um, and we find out that Vanille is partly responsible for this because it's indicated that his young, tiny son was chosen to be a Lassie because the Lassie felt threatened by an attack from Pulse. And we realize that Vanille was a part of that attack. That's So the, the only person available to try, sort of defend the Lassie was Saz's son Daj, and so Daj got chosen, even though typically I assume, or it's never really cleared up, but I assume it's mostly adults or people entering, entering adulthood who do get chosen in these times, but the only person it could find was Daj, so it chose Daj, uh, dooming Daj. And Vanille doesn't reveal that information. Like, okay, like, this is going to be a really harsh conversation. I get it, some people don't like confrontation. Uh, I understand it. I prefer to have the conversation, personally, but I get it. Uh, you know, I'm responsible for your son's death is not an easy conversation to have, right? I get it. Uh, however, it gets way worse. <laughs> it gets way worse. So what happens is these two are on a totally separate situation than the rest of the team. They're in a different city entirely called Nautilus. Nautilus was better than a lot of the uh, world we've seen because it's a populated city. It didn't have mini games. I was hoping for a gold saucer. Not there. But it does have Chocobo Park, where it tries to add that levity that you would find in a lot of the FF games. There's a Chocobo Song remix that is so cool, with like proper lyrics and everything. It was great. Uh, where you have this sort of little mini game of chasing the baby Chocobo around while he's having fun and all this. And it's not super interactive. There's no mini games or anything. But it was a nice break from combat in like factories and things like that. Uh, but then uh, we've got a new mysterious lady. She's so Lady Plainface that I can't even remember her name, but she's very sexualized. She's sultry. She walks with the hips. She's got a riding crop that she hits you with. And, ooh. <laughs> ooh. She's got very pushed up, perked breasts. Uh, she's got the whole package for... And no features other than that. She's breasts and a riding crop. So, like, any young teenage boy can project their crush. Whatever onto this person. I get it, right? Her face might as well be a sheet of A4 paper, <laughs> essentially. Uh, but she knows what's going on. She knows. She knows. Uh, and as Sa uh, as there's an interesting piece of monologue because obviously Vanille, it's, it's very seemingly demonstrated to me is Vanille lives to the very end of whatever this story is and is reflecting. We're sort of Playing the game through Vanille's eyes is what it appears to me, because very regularly we get these monologues from the from the background from Vanille, who seems a little older and is reflecting on what happened at the time. So it's almost like there's almost an unreliable narrator aspect to FF13, and the antics of snow and lightning could be perceived as being looked at through a young girl's eyes. They're not actually falling 900 feet. It's just what Vanille remembers. So that's the sort of head cannon I'm rolling with. <coughs> Either way. Vanille reveals we're about to we're separate. I know we're separating soon. I was like, how do you know that? Do you see the future? What's going on? And it's like, okay, so she knows that this is the end point for them. And the showdown happens when it's revealed that Vanille was there and she's the cause of Saz's son from the Lady Plainface. Um, and obviously she runs off in tears, like you don't understand. I'm sorry, uh, blah blah blah. And they then give the option for Saz to kill her because she says, we're going to kill them both, but why not let them kill each other? Like, that saves us a piece of work. And it's kind of fun because I'm cruel and evil. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, so we get a showdown between them where we do fight uh, a new Eidolon, which was... Ah, uh, begins with B. Mm, I can't remember. It wasn't one of the big ones. It was all fiery, but it wasn't a freak. 
Uh, Broomhilda. Yeah, it's Broomhilda. Uh, where we f they fight together because they've got a common enemy. They defeat Broomhilda. who turns into a really cool car for Saz, like Hot Rod from Transformers, uh, which was nice. And then we get the, the kind of reveal and showdown. So here's where it all broke down for me, guys. It's revealed that Fang and Vanille are hilariously hundreds of years old, or at least Vanille is. And this lost my mind because we've been joking about just how absurdly young these characters are compared to the wiki. Like visually, at least in my eyes, visually how young they are compared to what the wiki says they are. Now, Vanille is kind of towing that line. I think she's supposed to be 21. Yeah, a young student uh, type person that I would see in, in my local city. 21. Yeah, okay, I can I kind of see that. There's other characters that are a little bit iffy. But we were always joking as like, okay, this character over here, like Snow, Sarah, Snow's fiance and Lightning's sister, to me, looks like she's about 16 years old. And people got mad. They're like, no, she's 18. She's did blah, blah, blah. But she's still very close, right? So who cares? But I was like, she looks really young, like even 15, 16 years old. And like, no, the wiki says this. And then we got into the meme of anime where it's like, this character appears to be like in incredibly young, but is actually hundreds of years old. And Vanilla is! Oh my God. And I was like, no way are we doing this. She's actually hundreds of years old. And what happened is, apparently hundreds of years ago, she was chosen by Lassi, the Pulse Lassi, with Fang, and they fulfilled their focus and became crystals. They might not have been on the same mission, we don't know that, but either way, they ended up in crystal storage, <laughs> which they seem to have, and then one day, <clears throat> the crystal, they awoke. They just woke up, and just stumbled onto the floor, and they got magic outfits, like, we, we, there's an argument between whether she's dressed like Native American or like an African cultured outfit for this Australian speaking lady, either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, they got magic clothes, so obviously we had a weird shot of Vanille naked, but, like, obfuscated by the light. I was like, do we really need this? <laughs> like, none of the guys are ending up this way. Uh, and it also becomes apparent, by the way, like, on the sexual nature of things, which is always, like, you know, it's a point of cringe. If you watched that Persona 5 playthrough, you get it. Uh, it's that all the guys have their Lassie tattoos, like, on their arms, on their forearms. Even Fang has it up here, but, like... Lightning's is right between her breasts, and Vanille's is on her ass slash upper thigh, so she can, like, pull a skirt up to show it off. And now we have this, like, nude scene of Vanille, and I'm like, this is cringe. Either way, they magically dress her, uh, very much like Fifth Element. And it's then said, they awoke... Fang wakes up with no memory, right? But Vanille does have a memory, but doesn't tell Fang, so she keeps another secret. Instead of saying, well, I remember... I don't know why you don't remember, which would be the normal conversation. No, Vanille decides to keep it secret because obviously her nature now is to not cause confrontation and just keep stuff to herself. Um, but for some reason, they have a new focus. And that was when I was like, wait, 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 wait. I've been following along with this story of Lassies, Falsies, and this ridiculous terminology that you're using in the game. But one thing that has been set in stone since the start is that a, a Lassie... Uh, a, a falsy will choose somebody for some reason to become a lassie, right? And there's loads of these things. There's Carbuncle, there's Eden, there's whatever. And they choose somebody to be a lassie. That's a set in stone rule. And when you get chosen to be a lassie, you get a tattoo and you have a focus, which is a vague idea of what it might be through a vision. And you have a certain amount of time to complete that task on behalf of the Falsy. Either, and if you fail, you become a ghoul. And if you win, you become a crystal. Right? <clears throat> That's the rule. Then they just randomly say these guys are woke and they have a focus. Why? They already won. This is like being chosen twice for being in the Saw games. This isn't a good idea. Like, the odds of this should be astronomical, right? Astronomical. But they randomly awoke and they were like... And we were trying... It's not like, and we got given a new focus. That's not said. They just decide they have a new focus. And they don't know what it is because they haven't been given a vision or anything. But they uh, have the tattoos. So you can assume they have a focus for some reason. But none of the rules apply anymore. And then the jumping logic to make this all work is... We awoke from our crystals. We don't know what our focus is. But we have one, I guess, because we have the tattoos. So let's blow up a power plant. And maybe, and this is their words, maybe this will give us an idea of what our focus is. 
that's an enormous leap. <laughs> that's a huge leap in logic. It's like, ah, oh, I just want to go. I haven't got, I've got amnesia. I don't know who I am. Certainly from Fang's perspective. I think we should blow up this power plant. That'll probably help out. What? Why? Why were you chosen? Why did none of the rules apply? And why on earth would you just randomly decide to blow up a power plant to hope this would jog your memory, not a coffee? <laughs> Even Doctor Who, who's lived through this a million times, tried fish fingers and custards and a cup of tea. He didn't blow up a power plant, right? Very relatively innocent start to what's going on here. Uh, and this... And they didn't actually do anything, which is the other twist. It's like just their presence threatened, because obviously they intended to do it. I don't know who's running the power plant. It might be Phoenix or someone like that. Um, is um, enough for that f for Falsy to choose Dodge. So that's the whole situation. It's like they awoke randomly. They didn't know where they were. They were disorientated. But Vanille does have her memory. Fang doesn't. So they were like, we should blow up this power plant. And they're like, okay. Uh, and that set off this whole chain of events linking this hundreds of years old, 21-year-old girl uh, to be in this situation. I'm like, this is just nonsensical now. Like, none of this adds up. So we have to take enormous leaps mentally to try and figure this out. And the ATL doesn't help either. Is, okay, let's assume then that they got chosen again for some reason. The whole point of this is to let, let the game know that the people can awake from a crystal. You just don't know when. They just randomly wake up, so Sarah has a chance to live. But that could be hundreds of years in the future, so what help is it? Uh, and the same for Daj. Anyway, this whole story's played out, and then they do the stupidest bait and switch ever. Is Saz goes to kill Vanille because you ki you know essentially you killed my son, but I can't do it and I can't live with myself, so I'm going to commit suicide. And then we have a cut to black as you hear the gun. He's got the gun to his head, and the gunshot goes off. And then in the next scene, immediately after it comes back from the black, is uh, Saz is in a coffin. And being carried out as Vanille walks out wearing the robes to be executed in the future. And just a few minutes later, it's revealed that they're absolutely fine. Obviously, they are. They literally just... It's so dumb. It's like Infinity War. It's like... It's so stupid. They just gave Sars a brand new hot rod car and an Eidolon. And then they try and pull a suicide angle? Of course not. He literally just got his... Fuck it's freaking idle on for god's sake of course he's not dead like what are you talking about uh it's so stupid it's like hey here's his idle on in his uh sports car and then he died like no obviously not <laughs> that's so stupid uh, and it's revealed that he didn't shoot himself in the head he shot something else and then the lady comes in and hits him with the high riding crop and he's unconscious so they put him in a coffin no obviously it's so stupid to try they, they really want these like it reminds me you know of fantastic beasts where J.K. Rowling, for whatever reason, wanted these big consequences moments, but didn't want any of the consequences, so they're, like, immediately retconned. Uh, retcon is what I'm going to say, even though it's actually what happened, but you know what I mean when I say it's retconned. It's immediately, like, bypassed in some way to... You, you felt bad then, didn't you? You felt bad. Oh, that person's dead, but not really. So that's what's going on there. On the other side of the coin, the only thing I want to talk about briefly, because these videos are getting way too long for what the TDP should be, but this game is just so insane, uh, is that the rest of the crew go to Hope's house. Hope is the biggest jerk ever. And I know he's going to be like the big redemption story, but what an absolute ass! Not only does he finally sort of resolve things with Snow, and we get this weird, weird cutscene where Hope tries to kill Snow, but there's explosions and they fall... 50 stories i want to say but they fall through like a tarp <laughs> i was like this is like mankind undertaker hell in the cell again land this kid who I, I can't remember how old he's supposed to be i want to say he's supposed to be 14 or something and snow fall 50 stories crash onto the concrete floor but still get up because he's snow and snow puts him on his back although snow is like practically on the verge of death and carries him on his back to get keep going we've got to get to hope's house and all the way leading up to this, Hope has, uh, has been bringing up how much his dad doesn't understand. He doesn't believe in any of this. His dad's a jerk. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. And then, ultimately, they resolve their issues. Uh, and Snow has this ridiculously epic cutscene where he's banging everything. He's like, I just... I, words can't solve it. I need to fight. And if I stop fighting... It's all gonna come in, and I will fight for you, Hope. Blah 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 blah. It's like all oh, it's it's great. It's so good. <laughs> I'm like yeah, get him, King. You'll do it. 
Um, and we resolve Fang and Lightning meet up. So we got the whole crew together at this point. Besides the other two who are off doing their own thing. And we go to Hope's house and meet his dad, Bartholomew. Best dad in a video game ever. Bartholomew is the real king. He's welcoming. He's, son, this is your home. I don't care what you are. I don't care if you're a C or not. And we can be all like metaphorical about this as like... Uh, it could be anything. It could be that his son turns out to be gay or whatever. Like, however you want to say, I don't care who you are, son, because you're my son and I love you. And I'm like, why does Hope dislike his dad? And he's like, there's family pictures around. And in every picture, Hope's like, mm. so we just go with like angsty teenager here. There was a very weird scene here that was super Japanese that didn't land for me. Where Snow's like on his knees and praying and like there's a symbol of acceptance and... I was like, this is just a little odd from the Western side, but I'll allow it. It's whatever. Uh, and then they fight off uh, to go and do other things as the army arrives. And they tie up Bartholomew to say, they forced me to do it. You have to be free. And I'm, and then his dad's like, go and be you. Do what you need to do, son. I believe in you. I'm like, best dad of all time. His dad is great, supportive. He knows his son's got to go and do other things. What is the problem here, Hope? You absolute jerk. You're just a turbo jerk. And I hate you so much. I really hate you. And I know you're going to be the forefront of the story. Because of course you are. It's because you're called Hope. And you can never be without Hope. Like, it, it's so on the nose. It's ridiculous. But that's where we're up to. The team is eventually going to meet back up again, I believe. And now we're getting actual three player fights. Which is great. Our current plan is we've met back up with the Guardian Corps. And now we're going to attack uh, the big ship, Palmacia, which is ironically named after the big city in Final Fantasy II, which we just finished in our previous playthrough. Uh, so that's where I'm at. We're going to kick some butt. Um, the biggest thing right now, my current story belief is still that both sides are full of propaganda and that everybody in the world, all the humans of the Earth, uh, even Lightning says they consider us pets, are literally at the whims of Eden... And I believe Ifrit, because there's a, a part, a, like a, a, cell of, a festival happening in Nautilus, where you see the, the reenactment of the war between the Pulse and Cocoon. And there's a fiery lord in charge at Pulse. So I'm assuming it's Ifrit. So I assume Ifrit, my gut feeling is Ifrit and Eden are actually at odds with each other. And the people are all caught in the middle. And that's going to be the revelation of it. Uh, that's where we're going. So we'll see. We're off to kill the Emperor, who's definitely not evil. And his Lady Plainface riding crop sidekick. So that's where we'll be up tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in, guys. This journey has been wild. I, I'm honestly excited for every cutscene that comes up. I'll see you again. Bye.